He was the Imam of all Imams and the greatest of all creation, a man whom Allah Almighty had completed his outward and inward splendor. Let's not deny it and bury our heads in the sand and pretend that outward appearance doesn't matter. It does matter. And that is why Allah Jalla Jalaluhu decreed that all of the prophets and messengers would be upright and would be handsome and would be the fullest of men, physically speaking and inwardly as well. Allah knows this is the nature of man. He judges, she judges by appearance. It is true that when you see a person who is beautiful physically, but when you see their bad manners, they look beautiful. They look ugly. However, when you see somebody who is beautiful in manners and beautiful in appearance, then the circle of love and attraction is complete. Thus Allah would decree that all of the messages would be the finest of men. And our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the finest of them all. A quick description of his appearance. How did he look alayhi salatu wa salam? I share with you the words of those men and women who saw him. And you will notice that between the lines, you read not just a description, but you read obsessive love. Look at the words of Ka'b ibn Malik, a companion who saw him. What did he say in description of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, كَانَ النَّبِيُّ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam إِذَا سُرْ إِسْتَنَارَ وَجْهُهُ حَتَّى كَأَنَّ وَجْهَهُ قِطْعَةُ قَمَرُ He said, whenever the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would smile, his face would illuminate. His face would radiate as if it was part of the moon. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu he would say, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أبيض كأنما صيغ من فضة. The messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم was white in complexion. It was almost as if he, Allah had fashioned him from silver. جابر بن سمرة, he would say, رأيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في ليلة إضحيان. I once saw the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم during the night. When the moon was full and the sky was clear, فَجَعَلْتُ أَنظُرُ إِلَيْهِ وَإِلَى الْقَمَرِ And I began to look at him and look back at the moon. And look back at him and look at, back at the moon. وَعَلَيْهِ حُلَّةٌ حَمْرَاء At the time he was wearing a red garment. وَإِذَا هُوَ عِمْدِي أَجْمَلْ مِنَ الْقَمَرِ And I came to the conclusion that he is far more beautiful than the moon. What about the description of Al-Bara? Who would say, كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَرْبُوعًا The Messenger وسلم, was of perfect human proportions. Meaning not too tall, not too short, not too wide, not too slim. مَرْبُوعًا of perfect proportions. And I once saw him wearing a red garment. مَا رَأَيْتُ شَيْئًا قَطُّ أَحْسَنَ مِنْهُ In my life I have never seen anything that was more beautiful than him. عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ a man whose face was round like the moon. His color was, as some have described, was a harvest moon, whitish with maybe a vanilla tint to it, with a reddish tint as well in his cheeks. A man whose eyes were intensely dark and the white of his eyes were intensely white, so that when he was looking around, you know that he was looking at you. A man whose, white, whose mouth was perfect, very wide, so that when he speaks, he is clear and eloquent. There was no ambiguity in his speech. His eyebrows were finely arched and his eyelashes were long and his hair would reach down to his earlobe, sometimes to his shoulder. Alayhi salatu wassalam, the finest of all men. Umm Sulaym, la ilaha illallah, would carry a container carrying or catching the droplets of sweat falling off the forehead of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam when he was taking his siesta nap. He woke up and he saw her there <laughs> with a container catching the droplets as they fall from his head. He said, Umm Sulaim, what are you doing? She said, Messenger of Allah, we take your perspiration and we mix it with our scents and it becomes the most amazing of all fragrances. Alayhi salatu wassalam. Anas ibn Malik who served him for 10 years. You want a description? Take it from a man who served him for 10 years. He said, Ma ma sistu hariran wala dibajan alyana min kaffi rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In my life I have never felt any silk or brocade that was softer than the palm of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
ولا شممت رائحا قط هي اطيب من ريح رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم and in my life i have never smelled a scent that was sweeter than the natural body scent of the prophet muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم جابر he would say one of the younger of the companions it was the habit of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he would come out of the masjid the children would come running to him and so he would come to them individually and pass his fragrant hand over their faces one after the other. Look at the rahmah, look at the mercy. Jabir said, and I was waiting and it was my turn. And he passed his hand over my face. He said, I will never forget how it felt. The coolness of it, It smelt as if he had just removed his hand from the bag of a perfume seller. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Cold and subhanallah al azim scented. And perhaps, and maybe we will conclude with this, the most remarkable description we have of him has come to us by virtue of a, of a woman. It's always going to be the case. But she was an old woman. Alhamdulillah, give her an excuse. This is the name of an old lady called Ummu Ba'bad al Khuzaiya. And this happened when the Messenger وسلم, was migrating from Mecca to Medina. Mecca had rejected Islam. He wouldn't sit idle, twiddling his thumbs. He would search the world to present the religion. No obstacle is too great for a Muslim when Allah is his Lord. And so he makes his way immigrating from Mecca in secrecy all the way to Medina. He had nobody with him, by the way, with the exception to Abu Bakr and Siddiq and a non-Muslim. Abdullah ibn Urayqid al Layfi, his guide. They needed provisions. They came across a tent in the middle of the desert. They need to eat, they need to drink, something to help the wayfarer proceed. They came into the tent, an old lady called Ummu Ba'bad, Imra'atun Jalda, a strong woman who would help the wayfarers. They said to her, Ummu Ba'bad, are you able to assist us? She said, by Allah, I have nothing to offer you on this day. And so a sheep caught the attention of our beloved وسلم, at the back of the tent. He said, what about the sheep that I see at the back of the tent? She said, this is a very weak sheep. The reason it is here is because it's too weak to go out and graze. It has no milk, it dried up years ago. He said, do you give me permission to try? She said, go ahead. So he went inside and this woman is observing, documenting, marveling. He knelt down next to the sheep and he began to make dua to Allah Jalla Jalalu. And then all of a sudden the udder began to grow in size, filling with milk, subhanAllah. And he began to milk. And the first person who drank was the woman. And then he gave his companions to drink, including the non-Muslim. And he left a lot of milk for the house. And then he was the last person to drink alayhi salatu, alayhi salatu wasalam. He then took a pledge of allegiance. She took her shahada. She realized who was in front of her and they continued their journey to Medina. Later on in the day, in the day her husband Abu Ma'bad comes back home and he just sees this milk all over the place. Subhanallah. He said, Abu Ma'bad, this goodness, this khair, this milk, where, where did it come from? She said, لا والله إلا أنه مر علينا رجل مبارك. She said, no, no, by Allah. A very blessed man passed by today. He said, give me his description, O Ummu Ma'bad. Listen to her words. She said, رأيت رجلا ظاهر الوضع. I saw a man of a glowing appearance. أبلج الوجه. Glowing, radiant in his face. Hassan al Khalqi, perfect in his proportions. Lam tu abhu thuhla, wa lam tuzri bihi sa'la. He was not ruined by an, a big belly, nor did he have an overly small head. Wasim, rather, he was a very handsome man. Fi aynehi daj, his eyes were intensely dark. Wa fi ashfarihi wataf. And his eyelashes were intensely long. And his voice was very husky. And there was length to his neck. Listen to this, my dear brother. 
وفي لحيته كثاثة and his, lick, his, his beard was full his beard was full and then she said azaj meaning finely arched eyebrows and then she said in samata fa in samata fa alayhi al waqar even when he was silent subhanallah she is describing his silence as well when he was silent he was so dignified wa in takallama sama huwa alahu al baha but when he spoke he was overcome with grandeur and, and splendor. أجمل الناس وأبهاه من بعيد. He was the most handsome and beautiful of men from a distance. وأحلاه وأحسنه من قريب. But the sweetest and most gentle from up close. حلو المنطق and his speech was so nice. فصل it was so clear. لا هذير ولا تزر. You didn't think that his speech was too long, nor was it too short. كأن منطقه خزرات نظم يتحدرنا. His speech were like pearls falling off, cascading from a string. ربع. A man of perfect proportions. لا يأس من طول ولا تقطحمه عين من قصر. You did not think that he was too tall, nor did you think him too short. غصن بين غصنين فهو أنظر الثلاثة منظرا وأحسنهم قدرا. It was like looking at three splendid branches, but he was the most beautiful and radiant of those branches. And then she concludes by saying له رفقاء يحفون به. He had companions who are surrounding him. إن تكلم تبادر إلى قوله. If he instructed something, they rushed to fulfill it. وَإِنْ أَمَرُوا إِسْتَمَعُوا إِلَىٰ قَوْلِهِ When he spoke, they paid attention to every one of his words. مَحْفُودٌ مَحْشُودٌ لَا عَابِسٌ وَلَا مُفَنَّدٌ He was well served and well attended. Although I never saw him frowning once, nor did he miss out anybody in the gathering. لا إله إلا He said, Ummu Ma'bad, that is the man we've been hearing about in Mecca who claims to be a prophet. And it's been my intention to go to him and meet him. And I intend to do so if I am given strength. Allah.